What up, everybody? Just started off from Living Life Fearless. Today's date is March 15, 2018. You are listening to Music Files, and with me, as always, is my co host, Mr. Darius Walker. Say what up to everybody. What's good, everybody? Thank you for coming, joining us with Music Files. About to chop it up with the latest tunes, mostly hip hop, but a few things sliding in there. Oh, snap. We are matching. We usually don't match. Nah, I'll try to switch it up sometimes, man. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I haven't worn this one in a while, I felt like, on stream, so that's why I had to rock it, you know? Well, we For those who are wondering, this is the uh, Team Team T right here. It's got a Gorilla logo on the back. It's got, obviously, our front logo. Almost out of these. Honestly, we got, like, a handful left for those that still want to get some. It's probably about five or less, honestly. Yeah. But, but yeah, uh, I'm artist D Walker. Welcome to Music Files. <laughs> yeah, welcome back. Um, no special guests this time. Chop it up. Still working on those, but we still got some things you know we can touch on. Yeah, I mean, music still comes out. <laughs> no, but. So we're just gonna talk about mainly new stuff. Uh, we'll just open up with some news items I had. You know, wanted to talk about for first one. Craig Mack passed away. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's pretty much what everybody been talking about a lot this week. Um, yeah, recipes, Craig Mack. Um, you know, condolences to the family, of course, mm-hmm. and the Bad Boy family. Uh, for those who don't know who Craig Mack is, I don't know whoever's old enough to remember the song "Flavor in Your Ear." <laughs> Back They've at the least, day. for sure, heard the song at some point in their t- lifetime. It's impossible. I mean, "Flavor in Your Ear" is like. Flames. That song Smash. would go off right now in the club they play it. Yeah, and it was like one of the first remixes I remember had like fucking twenty people on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's when Diddy started the remix thing, like when he like really became the guy. Kind of a I mean, honestly, like I know Craig Mack, you know, just name and whatever, but <clears throat> but definitely like not too much far outside of that song because honestly his career never took off like you know you yeah. might have thought it would have especially after a song like that right interesting guy interesting story he uh you know he was way before mace way ahead of mace time when he went to the church and left music alone mm-hmm. and yeah i was gonna say like mace. South carolina and uh that's what he had been doing i guess just doing the whole church thing being a not a pastor but uh not a pastor but um uh, what are they called deacons or Whatever, so like, preacher. Like yeah, no. I don't know. The side guy, not the main. Oh, okay. Preacher, preacher, yeah, probably but, a deacon. Um, but yeah, he's down in South Carolina doing that, and uh, they said they found him just passed away at forty six. Man, that's crazy. Such a young age. Yeah, I didn't know he was that young. I thought I thought he was like fifty ish, but that still wouldn't make it like okay. Like yeah, forty six though. Dang. What do you know? What it was from? Did they say like um? Heart said attack. heart failure. Heart failure, dang. Seems to be happening a lot lately. Just, yeah. It's definitely, I mean, I mean, I don't know, I, I'm not, you know, a doctor or scientist, but definitely gotta watch what we eat out here, man. Yeah. You gotta watch what we eat out here. I'm trying to get off that fast food, I haven't really been, I haven't had McDonald's in forever, which is awesome. <laughs> I used to actually eat mcdonald's like every other week but <laughs> now it's like never <laughs> i will say mcdonald's breakfast is still fire <laughs> yeah that egg mcmuffin is never gonna not be good that that's delicious I yeah it's still fire for that i'll have two of those every day like if, if i could but <laughs> but um other than that you know recipes craig mac listen to flavor in year if you haven't heard it Dope rapper, never got the yeah. true shine he could have gotten, but uh, you know he still got he's still in a lot of people's minds and memories still if they still you know recognize him like that. Mm-hmm. So, so there was an award show. Um, I heart, I heart radio, radio. Well, music awards. Yeah, I heard about that, but I'm not, I didn't really check on it. <laughs> I never check on it. It just sounds so corny. Um, yeah. <laughs> So I didn't even know like what the format was and like it was some special thing, but it's kind of it's like a mix. It's like 
it's like their it's basically a popularity contest and based on like a lot of uh, their, whatever gets played on their radio stations and then they have some <laughs> sections that are voted on by people um like almost like social media type of sections and stuff like this they're trying to be like super trendy and uh, more okay. so than like the other festivals but then you still have like vmas for that so but mm-hmm. um yeah, so I guess that just came out, and hmm. I looked at the looked list at that, of the winners, and it's yeah. not surprising who won. Were they just, like, they giving them to too. the obvious? Like, oh, yeah, here you go. I saw Cardi you know. B. I think she got something. That's all I noticed from it. Uh, Ed Sheeran. Ed, <laughs> yeah. Won a bunch. Taylor Swift. I told you, mostly most stream, bro. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Still shouldn't be winning like that. They even gave one to the chain smokers and they suck, so you know, imagine dragons Streams, bro. like it's straight a popularity contest for real, for real. Yeah. If you look at like the winners and it's just all mainly mainstream names and whatnot and so mm-hmm. not missing much there. For sure won't be checking for those awards probably ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm shocked there is an actual awards. Like, I was like, wait, what? They have awards? Like, it's a show? Like, where their performances and shit? Like, is it a real like I radio show? I'm assuming there's performances. I don't like, if it's a radio show, that shit should have been like on. That should have been like the Littest concert. That should have been like like Summer Jam or some shit. Like, I'm but with sure. crossover every kind of artist that could have been lit. I mean, they have their little iHeart Radio Festival every summer, but I don't know about the awards I've actually never seen. So I, I didn't see anything mentioned of performances, but I'm assuming there are performances. I'm just not going to personally go check that out myself. <laughs> yeah. So unless uh, it goes viral, I'm not checking. <laughs> so uh, if anybody has seen the iHeart Radio Awards, let us know. Are they even yeah. worth checking out, or just what we think it is? Just a straight popularity. <laughs> watered down or show but uh yeah for real for i mean the only more informed and the only let us couple know. things notable is that bon jovi got the icon award from them mm. um hmm. it's, it's kind of a popularity contest so i get it yeah i mean though they should yeah. get an icon award i mean it's bon jovi i mean bon jovi 30 <laughs> years plus obvious so. yeah just like uh and then they gave the innovator award to Chance the Rapper. Innovator Award? Mm, Innovator Award. Interesting. So, I mean, my thing is, is he an innovator? For what? Yeah, like, for what? Music? Why why didn't Nipsey get it? They should have gave it to Nipsey or something. But it's, I mean, it's a popular contest again, so, I mean. I know, that's why it's fucked up. I'm like, what did he innovate, though? Getting a deal for a month? That's the size of a real record deal, or I I literally couldn't tell you what. Uh, <laughs> I'm like I'm not what sure what for. what uh, in in a innovator. What the three the three hat? <laughs> he innovated the three hat. I mean, I guess they're trying to say because he was uh, Christian in, rap maybe? independent, you know, but uh, yeah. Independent. It's a a clever umbrella to use, but okay. Yeah, Nipsey's independent. Well, kind of. I don't think he's independent anymore. But still, Nipsey's a hustler. Just like Nipsey's not independent anymore. Nipsey's with Atlantic Records. But what I'm not understanding is like, so how did he not be considered innovative of being independent when he's for sure not the first one to do it? Or, like, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, he had a really big year, but to say that he's an innovator is, is a little why would he get? Why me. would he get the first, like, I'm so confused. Have they had more, have they had this award show before? I'm like, yeah, is this the very first one? Yeah, they've had it for a few years now, for sure. <laughs> okay. I guess I'd have to see what the list looked like before. Like, I mean, I don't know. Given to... I think from what little I read is that he did kind of allude to the fact that he doesn't consider himself to be an innovator and that he wasn't the first one to do it. So he kind of said it himself. But uh, oh. again, a humble pie for Chance. It's a popularity <laughs> contest. I mean, you know how I feel about Chance. He's, he, you know, he can't, uh, 
you can't you can't mess with the image. You know, he's got to be <laughs> humble about everything he does. And where's Mister? Is it manufactured? <laughs> I think so. I think it's manufactured. I think it's. I think he is a great guy, but I think it's also. It's the image, bro. It's still an act, even if it's not like so. Bleak. The regular yeah, him bro. isn't the image that everybody so. has of him. I mean, he's cool and nice it's, like that, but he's not like like he looks like a teddy nice, bear. I'm, he's like call me cynical, but nobody's that nice and nobody's that fucking positive all the time. But whatever, bro. That's yeah, how I feel. Hey, he's innovating the hip hop care bear lane. That's what he's doing. He's so. Mm. I guess. He's out care bearing Big Baby Drum. <laughs> so yeah, I guess uh, he's an innovator now. Confused, but cool. But that right. was it for iHeart Radio Awards. Again, let us know if you guys watched. If anybody actually watched iHeart Radio, what is iHeart Radio? Awards. Is that first? It's of like all. the conglomerate that owns like a ton of radio stations across, you know, okay. the country. Word. Ryan so Seacrest like, is involved somehow. So they're bigger than Revolt. Yeah, they're much bigger than Revolt. Okay, cool. Um, and they're more pop and like. I mean, I've yeah. heard of iHeart. I mean, I just don't know. I think they actually they own a lot of shit now that I think about they it. Are think they are pretty massive, and I'm pretty sure like record. Like there's Hot some record. Seven I'm sure like record labels and stuff are behind them. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they try to put the. The innocent face on, but I'm pr- I'm sure there's like you know a giant corporation behind them. Yeah. Oh it, well, I just googled iHeartRadio just to get a better be- a better uh, read on them, and the right. very first thing that popped up, we'll just make this a news item. iHeartRadio <laughs> has filed for bankruptcy. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh! Interesting. Breaking news. Breaking news, people. Just Whoever today, is owed ago. money by iHeart, you're not getting it. <laughs> it was I hope a you got your events. It was just America's biggest like radio f- company, one of the biggest entertainment companies. Period. God damn. It has more than twenty billion dollars in debt <laughs> for over a decade. Um, oh, I didn't even know they've been out for a decade. Yeah. No, they've been out for a while. <laughs> That's why. That's been why. Out for a while. Damn. Bankruptcy. That's it's not a light one. Yeah, let me just I'm just give him a little read on real quick. But uh yeah, iHeartRadio owns eight hundred and fifty radio stations across the US. Mm. And including many of the pop most popular ones in top tier net markets. So I'm assuming like New York and LA and Places yeah. like that. I know they're in Arizona. I hear them in Phoenix and all the time, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I hear Charlemagne say iHeart, so I think Hot 97. Yeah, I think Hot 97 owns iHeart. <clears throat> but um, it's saying that just because they filed for bankruptcy doesn't mean drastic changes are on their way, at least not right away. Um, and a public announcement of the dealing that it will continue the operating business in the ordinary co- in the ordinary course. Hmm. But uh yeah, so breaking news, we were just talking about iHeartRadio, High Radio <laughs> and apparently they have filed for bankruptcy. So if you were an iHeartRadio Radio listener, let us know what you think because I don't listen <laughs> to the radio, so it wouldn't affect me in any way, shape, or form. But uh Yeah. <clears throat> That's That's interesting. Interesting. Another announcement, uh Beyonce and Jay Z are going on tour again for On the Run Two. On the Run Two. <laughs> they just like sneaked out. Yeah, that was weird too. Their rollout because what they did was they posted it on their Facebook page and then took it down and then said that was it. That wasn't the real thing and then reposted it. Yeah, like, that means somebody on their team fucked up. Uh, they jumped the gun a little bit. They jumped the gun, like... and they were, somebody was pissed that they did it that when they were doing it. And, you know, they tried to play it down, which is... I mean, at that point, you just be like, well, we weren't planning on announcing like this, but this is happening. You know, you can't try to step it back and then do yeah, it Yeah, either we're having a tour or we're not, guys. Yeah, so. so That just means somebody on their team fucked up and might be fired. Yeah. Definitely got yelled at. Might be fired. Oh, definitely fired. If they're if they're small enough, they're fired. 
<laughs> if they're not like first name basis with with Yonce and Jay, they're fired. Yeah, so uh, it's a global tour, well, at least in Europe and uh, UK and stuff like that, and across North America. Mm-hmm. The last tour they did, uh, what was it 2014, I believe, with um, following Beyonce and Magna Carta, Holy mm-hmm. Grail. It was a massive tour, obviously. And uh, yeah. this one will probably be even bigger. Because Lemonade The Lemonade 444 tour? Is, uh, you know, <sighs> together. All in your feelings. So, I mean, <laughs> that, I mean I, I'm not going, but it's going to be a dope <laughs> show for whoever's going to go. Man, those tickets sure. are going to be hella expensive. Yeah, those tickets are I don't know if I can go. Way too much for what I would be willing to spend. Uh, I'd have to spend a rack just to, like, get close to where I'd want to sit. Well, like be you could spend like a hundo, probably a little less than a hundo, probably. And sit Those like tickets, Jay Z's tickets start at sixty, like, and they ain't regular. like the nosebleeds. Yeah, so like if it's a Jay Z Beyonce joint, it's gonna at least start at eighty. Or you can go on the. I mean, I don't ahead. know. I don't know how they do it. I don't know if they have the, uh, you know, that pit where it's like general admission and you can just. Oh yeah. They probably yeah. I don't know. I don't know how they do it at the Garden. I, I would mean, assume they have show. one, but I'm a, but I would probably say it's probably not right next to the stage like some people do it. Right, right in front of the stage is probably like VIP and probably like hell. Well, they actually, I think there's a pit, but then they have a a section off where there's a fence between the VIP paid, like yeah. so that they have their own like yeah. space and that they like can right move around to into. The, yeah, but yeah. yeah, it's right in front of this. Yeah, so it's like they get an extra like twenty yards of space in front of that crowd I think. and that shit's probably super fucking expensive hell yeah i tried it's to look like at the tickets for that just for the dave Chappelle show that shit was like six hundred dollars just to sit shit. i was like damn dude. i'm like there's no way i'm trying to <laughs> for one ticket i love, I was you, like, I love you dave man. but bruh i'm glad <laughs> yeah, you're getting nah. this bread but 600 ain't gonna have it for me dog for real i was like bruh I spend a lot on my tickets anyway, though. Way more. I spent like one. Look, I spent like one fifty. I spent like one fifty. Yeah, it was like I spent like one fifty for Kendrick Lamar uh, when he was in Phoenix this summer. Uh, uh I bought two tickets, so I got so about three. But, yeah, same here. Bro, I was like right next to the stage, like, and I was had seat. Yeah. It was like it was a little off the side. Oh like, yeah, I saw yeah, I saw your view, video. Bro. Yeah, I see my videos up there on. Live my fears. I post some pictures and videos from it. I had some dope ass seats. So I was like, I can't. I'm surprised <laughs> I got them shits for 150, bro. I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> for real. I was like, oh, word. Well, you you got the right look right there. I did, man. I did. I might. I might. I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna be back, but if I was, I'd definitely try to get to that uh, TDE one. But um, mm. that looks J and B. Nah, not on my radar this this time. Maybe. No. Nah. 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 <laughs> you guys let me know if you guys are planning on going to the uh, Jay and Beyonce on the run two tour. I don't know when it's starting, but I'm sure it's in the spring. Um, how much well, would you guys be willing to spend on tickets to go see Jay-Z and Beyonce? That's a good if question. If you have seen them before, how much did you spend? We want to know this. Facts, yeah. That leads me to a question, though. Like, Does this mean we're getting a Jay-Z and Beyonce joint album? I would speculate, yeah, but I want to ask you about that Khaled song, too. But uh, I, we'll talk about that after we just talk about the speculation of the okay. joint album. Go ahead. So, it's been said that Lemonade and 444 were products of them <laughs> starting out with the idea of a joint album, but then went their separate ways because the projects needed to be completed in whole the way they were making them. Yeah. So I think the vibes that they wanted are like somewhere where they were, but then trying to grab some more of that fun I'm stuff they had. So sure I think it'll be have... upbeat if they do do it, but I'm not sure. I'm I I honestly I'm sure they had like a hundred songs. They probably they definitely have a shitload you know, of like... songs for their <laughs> so sessions because they, they, they were they recording throw at out... the same time. Yeah. So I mean, it's not like they don't have the music they can just put out an album. I just don't know how they want to roll it out. 
because they are, they announced the tour before they rolled out a single or anything like that for new music. So right now, all we know is they're doing a tour off of their two projects. Mm-hmm. I'm keep hearing rumors that they got an album or they're working on an album. Or, or I mean, they could run the right summer now. if they do that, though. How hype would you be for a Jay Z Beyonce album, though? Man, sometimes. Well, here's the thing: when Jay Z's on a track with Beyonce, she does the hood shit. Like she does more like kind of gutter shit, and she gets wavy. Sometimes she gets real wavy on it. Like she doesn't do that shit with her own stuff as much. But when when Hov's around, she kind of she has been doing like, it more lately. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I'm like, I kind of want to see. Beyonce work with Hove to that extent to just see what what that sound would be like stretched out, you know. I love that's the, what I want. But hear. I'm not gonna lie, I wouldn't want to hear her and Jay Z on every song together that much. Yeah, I mean, so that brings me to my question: What do you think R&B about that rap DJ albums. Khaled? That DJ Khaled single? Eh, like I feel about most DJ Khaled singles. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what's okay, it called? Another... Top off. Another oh, future. Uh, well, features another not good yes feature, uh, yeah. and then repetitive and like any other DJ Khaled song with just mm-hmm. a couple big names. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like it was just nothing that like made me like, oh shit, I I need to hear a whole album of them together. You know, there's nothing like that. It was just right. like, okay, this is cool. I mean, how yeah, much so buzz do you hear around? I don't hear it that much. Like, I don't ever hear nobody talk about it. Um, I don't know. The buzz is that high, but it is getting heavily streamed. Like, it's definitely doing numbers. Yeah, so but I don't, people are listening to it. But you know, when a song is popping, popping, and you know, like, everybody's well, I think it's because of Beyonce's everybody. part, though, because her part is like probably my favorite part on the song. Probably, but it's still not. Yeah. It's nothing that made me want to go. Oh, I need a whole album. Of these two together, like true, mm-mm. true. I don't know. I guess it kind of depends on the producers as well for me. I mean, are there are there any like great rap slash R and B albums ever put out there? What do you mean, the Fugees, man? I mean, like two different. <laughs> you know exactly what I mean. Two different, <laughs> yeah, groups like entities coming together to form. I mean, like, I don't know about good. Big Sean uh, and Janae Aiko lie. tried to do that thing. It was, what was it? average, a little above average. Yeah, I would. So, I mean, I'll look, I'll, I'll take that back because I will say Jay Z and R. Kelly, best of both worlds. I was still kind of fire. come on. That's classic. Actually, yeah, if that you say that, fun. like the best of both worlds was epic. That, that was, was so. legendary. So okay, outside of that, I can't really think of anything. <sighs> Maybe Chris Brown Tiger mixtape was all right. When they came out. Yeah, that was cool. It's hard to think about. I don't know if there are that many super collabs, so. I mean, I'd, I'd be interested just to hear. I mean, does but... Ja Rule count? Like, I mean, did he, I mean, he didn't do a whole album though with anybody, though. Yeah, he didn't do, like, a full project. project. So, I mean, it just doesn't happen that often. So, I mean, I'd be interested, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't be, like... Oh my god! Like I wouldn't be as hype as I would be if like Kendrick and J Cole said they were doing an album together. Oh, I'd be way more excited. Or even if like Jay and even if Jay and Kanye said, "Oh, we're doing Watch the Thrones too." Like, oh yeah, I'd be way more excited for that too. Then and Watch the Thrones was crazy. So I definitely think it's gonna match those levels. But I'd be interested to hear. I definitely listen. Of course, I listen. But uh, I don't know. I give it about a. Right now, from what I'm hearing, <laughs> Buzz, I give it probably like 70% chance mm. of it actually mm. happening. That's pretty high. You're right. 65%. <laughs> 65. I was like, I don't know if I could go with that. Yeah, I go 65. I'll say 65. 65 solid. I like that. I could, I could rock with 65%. Yeah, because I'm like really skeptical, but... Like you said, with the hype and like just the way they rolled out this like tour kind of shit, and we know they got music. Definitely. They're probably they might just do an EP. They could just rock out with something smooth and just be like, "Hey, here's six songs." Jay don't do EP, bro. Or Beyonce. Jay Z just dropped a ten song project. He but could put out a EP, six song. Bro. 
Yeah, but that's because <laughs> they ain't doing it. If they doing a project, it's going to be all out. Yeah, it might be the ten songs though. Yeah, but still full. It's going to be a full project, full rollout. Less than an hour though. That's what I'm saying. Either way, it's still be a full rollout. <laughs> EP ain't no full rollout. Yeah, some of them are. Who? I mean, who just dropped the EP? Wale? Like, yeah. And that was <laughs> just, uh, oh, here, here's some songs. Like, nah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, uh... I mean, you guys let us know. Like, how excited would you be to hear a Jay-Z and Beyonce album together? And what percentage do you think that is of actually happening? I mean, and what is like the last, if there is even, great rap slash R&B album where like two entities, one rapper and one R&B artist got together? Was it Best of Both Worlds? Or was there another one that we're missing and not thinking of? Let us know. Yeah, let us know. So, Lauren Hill is popping back up, right? She's, uh, she'll be really? headlining the Pitchfork, Pitchfork Festival this year. Oh, swag. Uh, to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Miseducation of Lauren Hill, one of my favorite albums of oh, all wow. time. Oh, wow. That's, yeah, that album. If you haven't heard the Miseducation of Lauren Hill, do yourself a favor and jump <laughs> and off listen the bridge. to it ASAP. You can pause this podcast right now and listen to that if you haven't even heard nah, that. Nah, yet. Hey, nah, nah. And then come I'm back. not with that. Finish this podcast and then you can go <laughs> check out uh, <laughs> Miss Lauren Education Hill will be waiting for you after this podcast. Just know you, that's a must listen. Like, Honestly, must it's like one of the greatest albums of all time. And I don't think anybody has ever even come close to, especially any female artists have ever come close to like, reaching that. To make it a project that's uh, impactful? No. <laughs> Maybe Missy. Maybe Missy is close for me. Close, but it's not it's not a go to album for everybody. That's cause they it's don't know. Like... That's cause they don't know. <laughs> That's even the dopest to ever do it. But uh Of course. She definitely need to on. Hear, hear her album if you haven't heard message you guys from Lauren Hill. And then if you're in the area and you're going to Pitchfork Festival if I'm gonna suggest one set to go check out, it's Lauren Hill. She does not come out very often, so yeah. she doesn't even do music that often. So if you're going to do something like that, it's definitely her. Yeah, you don't know how long she's gonna care enough to perform for us. She might be like, "Well, I'm done performing, guys." I mean, you know? basically, it at this point. But so, um, speaking of artists looking back at their work, Elton John. Is putting out his oh, yeah. tribute album, but like his own tribute album for him and Bernie. Uh, how you say his name? Toppin, T- Toppin. Um, I don't know. Double I album Toppin. called uh, Revamp and Restoration, and it's mm-hmm. a tribute album. Benny picked the artists who are like covering, yeah, some of their best songs. I didn't look at. Is it like, do they have the artists? Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, a cra- it's a crazy list, man. It's like all contemporary artists. Is Logic um, on there? Yeah, yeah, Logic is on there. Uh, because Logic put a cut he did. of Elton and John calling this him. for sure. Uh, that's swag. So, so um, ooh, that's swag. Okay. We'll get to Logic in a little bit. but uh, So, he's got like Pink, Logic, Coldplay, Ed Sheeran. Good God. Uh... Florence and the Machine, Mumford and Sons, Mary J. Blige, Q Tips on there, The Killer, Sam Smith, Miley Cyrus and Lady Gaga, uh, Queens of the Stone Age. Mm. Oh, I might definitely have to check that one out. Um, Damn. You got like Elton country John's artists. going hard right now. Like, uh, you got like fuck? Little Big Town on there. Uh, Are you Lynch serious? Field. That's going to crush, bro. Elton John with Chris Little Stapleton. Big Town. Oh, my God. Dolly Parton. They got Miley Cyrus on there twice, so I guess they're friends. Uh, Willie Nelson, oh, um, Dirk sure. Bentley. So it's like Damn. the most eclectic fucking group of artists that you'll like ever see, and they're That's all doing swag. tributes or covers of like his work. That's interesting. 
some of the best and most famous work. Damn. I mean, it really well, shows just how, like... Most of those people have performed at the Grammys in the last three years. Oh, they're all modern contemporary artists. Like, isn't yeah. they like, all... Or won a Grammy. They either out. performed or won a Grammy in, like, the last three years. He even has Alessia Cara on here. So. See? That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> he, he, he basically, like... Damn, he just picked the 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 shooters. He's he's just like this is like the untouchables. Like it's like I don't even know this super Expendables, bro. bro. This is Expendables camp. Like I'm getting all the big guns. Like, you got everybody on here. Super eclectic from all different genres, and uh, I mean it kind of just shows how like how diverse how diverse he was with his music, anyways. Right, you know because. The fact that he can get all these people to plug in and like still work with this song is like cause he was never really tied into one genre anyways. So, mm-hmm. I mean, he's a legend, bro. So, yeah. I mean, he I did just that performance with Eminem, right? Yeah. After they, after yeah, they that was crazy. had like beef, and then yeah, like, or fake well, beef, like the media put out there. Yeah, Eminem saying all that like anti-gay stuff, and then like, and he used them John in the song too. He name dropped Elton John. Obviously, <laughs> yeah, he name dropped Elton John, and and then they came on to the song, and it was dope. It was such a dope fucking moment. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, he's a legend, bro, and the fact that he's putting Super out legend. his own tribute album to himself is just like fucking perfect. <laughs> it's like, bro, well, he's because he's gonna you know, clean you do up, it any bro. Other way. He wants his legacy awards now, so he's probably gonna be like, "All right." Oh, this is because in January he announced that he is retiring from touring. Oh. So this year he has one giant tour like of 300 dates before he officially calls it quits on touring. Mhm. Um so if so if there's any time to go see Al John it's definitely now. <laughs> Figure out what city he's going and then your area and go fucking see him. I might right. just do this for sure. Yeah, low key I'm like I'm more interested I'm in like that than the on the run 2 tour. Well, I'm for like, sure. The last time to see Elton John on tour, like, yeah. shit's gonna be epic, bro. Yeah. So yeah, so if you're in the area, definitely check the dates and check where you see him. It might be your last fucking chance to do so. Right. You, he did do the. Uh, he was doing the residency in Las Vegas. I don't know if you saw the incident and shit. No. There. So like what he's happened? performing. Uh, God damn it! What's the name of it? Uh, what song was he playing? I didn't hear about this incident. Let me look this up real quick. But uh, he's playing <laughs> one of his. Uh, Saturday night. It was Saturday night, all right for fighting. Um, okay. You know, right, rowdy song. Yeah. He likes to bring people up on stage while he's you know, doing the song, and there's a bunch of people on stage mm-hmm. playing piano, people on, leaning on the piano, and some, some fucking drunk guy just keeps trying to like <laughs> high five him. While he's playing the song and shit. Like, oh my god. What? And he gets fucking pissed. Like, walks off stage, comes yeah. back, kicks everybody off the stage, and is like, it's the last fucking time I'm going to have people up on stage. Thank you, you ruined it. Da, 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 da. Like, yeah. <laughs> it was funny. It, you should just watch the video, bro. Uh, damn. That's hilarious. It just made me think of when he was like, cameo <laughs> in, uh, what movie was that? Oh, Kingsman 2. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that movie. I didn't know there was a second one, so no. There was a second one. It sucks. <laughs> but, uh... <Elton> <laughs> I was there. like, there's a se- there's a two? I was like, why would... Okay. It sucks. But uh, Elton John's in there a significant amount, and that was dope, so... Good. Last so news item I had is, uh... Did you know this? Finn Wolfhard? Did, well, first of all, the last name is fucking incredible. But, um... <laughs> Finn Wolfhard, the kid Mike from Stranger Things, the one who's like oh, yeah. 11. Uh huh. Apparently, he's and has, or he's like the lead of a band. And I guess oh, really? the, uh, one of their first singles, City Boy, reached number one on Spotify's like viral what? playlist or whatever. That's crazy. He totally looks like a like a band kid though. Like their band is called <laughs> Calpurnia. Calpurnia, and they are a Canadian what? alternative rock band. Wow, that's the name crazy. Is their single called City Boy. So yeah, I went and checked it out, and uh, I had to. I had to. And, like the news is just 
so interesting and weird that I didn't expect it that I had to give it a listen to. Yeah. Um, it's definitely <laughs> some teenage shit, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not nice. bad. Uh-huh. It's pretty decent, but it's still, like, you know, some teenage shit. And you can tell, yeah. like, like any teenager who grew up listening to certain kinds of music, you can tell he's influenced by, like, some big-name acts and shit and, like, bands. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like approximation of that, so. Yeah. But it was cool. Interesting. Huh. The kid from Stranger Things. all of those kids could do whatever. Band. Yeah. He Millie Bobby Brown should start was. singing. <laughs> She'd go platinum. She apparently likes rap, so. Oh, Maybe shit. she'll be she a rapper. Spit some bars? <laughs> Millie Bobby Brown spit some bars? That'd be crazy. But yeah, I mean, these fucking kids, you know, I knew they were talented, but I didn't know they are that talented. That's cool. So yeah, Calpurnia, the name of the band. Calpurnia. I'm about to check out that song just to see what it, just to see what this check little it out, band City Boy. Like, City you know. Boy. <laughs> All right, so that's it for music news. Um, yeah, that's all I had. So let's talk about some albums. We'll start with Logic since we already talked about Logic. Yeah. Bobby Tarantino 2, not necessarily an album mixtape, but it's all original music. Mm-hmm. What did you think? Uh, Pretty cool, Logic. Just off top. Um, I thought it was interesting with the intro was the fucking uh, Rick and Morty. Yeah, uh, that is kind of hard. Well, his skit. You his haven't skit seen Rick and Morty. Hard. Have you watched Rick and Morty yet? Not like all. Of, I've watched like two episodes of that. It's not on Netflix, bro. And Come on, I bro. Just... <laughs> you have the internet. There's like literally so many ways to fucking. I've watch never, Rick I've and never Morty. went. Out, I've never gone out of my way to look for it. You need to fucking go out of your way and watch Rick and Morty already. Like I'm just not understanding this. Everyone says it's great. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> Some of the so, best shit out there, like, period. And one of the yeah, greatest I, shows that Adult Swim has ever done. So that's saying a lot. Well, there you go. You just proved my point as to how cool that intro was. <laughs> well, I, was, I asked you this because he's actually already cameoed in Rick and Morty. Oh, swag. And, like, he was, swag. like, as logic cameoing in there and, like, in the Damn. space and shit and, like, performing for, like, aliens and all this shit, like... Oh, that's dope. So he's already had it. So it was like that already relationship. It was like a surprise for me when like they did it again. Yeah. But it was it was definitely a dope intro. Even mm-hmm. doper if you watch the fucking show. So watch the fucking well, show. Well, there you go. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> for those who haven't watched it, it's still cool. <laughs> but that's where it's from because some people might not know who who these two people are talking in the because he always has little skits like that. Justin Roy- Roiland. He's the voices of a lot of guys on that show. Yeah. Um. So my thought about it is that it's a cool, you know, it's his, it's his like Me Too type of project, Bobby Tarantino. Where he's yeah. like, oh, I can do this too. Like, I can do this other type of rap, basically. And yeah. he tries to show off and do that where it doesn't have like a giant message behind it and concept like his other stuff. Mm-hmm. A lot more trap and like upbeat and club kind of banger yeah, stuff. Yeah, this is kind of like a jack em for beats kind of like let me put my sauce on it, show you that your style is easy to me. Like, yeah, but he's kind of swagging all over. I know it. he's trying to swag all over it, but my my opinion <laughs> is that he's not swagging that much all over. It. Uh, <laughs> he's he can not. rap. He clearly got skills, but. It gets boring. It does, and when you're comparing it to like the other contemporary rap and trap type shit that he's trying to emulate, it's not on the same level, and it's for sure not better than that stuff. So it's kind of like, well, I mean, it's better than it's Justin cool. Supplies. It's better than JT Supplies. I mean, it's cool to see you, <laughs> you know, switching it up and trying a different sound and more modern and typical yeah. trap sound. But it's like, all right. It was weird because it was Still like he was kind of mocking certain like like artists and stuff a little bit, mm. but 
I don't know. It was kind of... It was weird. I liked Big Sean's verse on it, though. On his, uh... Kind of. I don't I thought, remember I think really. Big Sean sounds good. Yeah, I mean, it's just... Big Sean just sounds good after Logic. Like, he, Logic made Big Sean sound like a better rapper to me. Like, it was weird. It, it was just... For me, it just felt like very forgettable. Like I said. Yeah. I mean... I feel like it the kind first of falls one was in much line better. with a lot of his stuff, his mixtapes. So I feel like his first Bobby Tarantino was much better. Yeah, he was more focused on the concepts and less of the showmanship the first time around. I mean, I just think he was trying to swag out and show off and shit on other people's styles, and I just don't think he did it a good job of that. So it kind of failed in his purpose for me. Yeah, people said he was um, kind of responded to Joyner Lucas a little bit. He did. On, he did. On Yuck. He did. Yeah, um, he didn't drop uh, his name. He responded, about- but then he like he followed up with like some peace, love, and positivity shit like right after. So I was like, all right, this is all I, I want with you. Shit, would bro. you keep pushing the issue yeah. or something like that? Like y'all on the beef, bro. Like, <laughs> come on, bro. I ain't trying to hear that right after it. But uh, he gave a little response talking about I could kill your career and, blah, blah, and all this mm-hmm. but I won't do that because I'm about peace level positive shit dead your whole career with no respawn yeah <laughs> but I won't do that because peace level positivity bro so like nah, yeah wasn't feeling was like, word. all right nah. logic was so you so you'll never dead my career no matter how hard I push the issue <laughs> like okay obviously you acknowledge it so I mean, I haven't, re- I haven't written a reaction for you yet, um, but mm-hmm. that's the gist of my reaction, honestly. It's just uh, it was a couple <laughs> cool songs, but cool, nothing crazy. Um, yeah. What I was, it was nice, though, for fans because they know that he's not going to drop more than, like, one more. Or, well, actually, now that he's signed, I don't know how many albums he has to make. Do you really because... believe that he's going to drop one more album? Bullshit. No. I thought he was bullshit. Gonna... I call bullshit. <laughs> when he bullshit. said it, I was like, he was ending his career. So hopefully bullshit. they just. I think somebody just talked to him. He, I think he wanted to. I think he genuinely wanted to just do one more. <laughs> bullshit. I I really think he only wanted to do one more project. Cool, bro. I think he got tired of it. He was just like in most deaf. Most deaf retired. I think it was right before. It was like six months before the Grammy shit. He was like all like, and then he started blowing up, fire yeah. for real, blowing up, and like making hella money, and like, oh, mm-hmm. you really think he's walking away? Bullshit. Nope, he's definitely not. Just he's like most deaf, most deaf said he's retiring, and what I hear is working on a fucking. Why do I Black keep Star hearing album. him in music? Like I'm so confused when it says featuring Yasin Bey. Like, oh, how? and apparently, how does Yasin Bey oh, rap? Because he's <laughs> apparently there. There's talks and rumors of them working on a Black Star album, so. Oh. You tell me if they're retiring. Working on? Well, that kind of sounds lit, though. <laughs> oh, that would be super lit. I'm, I'm not, look, I want him to stay in rap. Like, it's stupid <laughs> yeah. as fuck that you even want to leave when you ain't even done shit like that in a while. So, yeah. I don't know. This is what, I feel like this is what you're famous for. This is, like, what <laughs> gave you all of this in the first place. And then, like, <laughs> fuck, rap now? Like, come on, dog. Yeah. There's so many ways that just you can do it yourself. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me, though. But whatever. He's not walking away. Most definitely not walking away. They all, they're they not retiring when they say that shit. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, so what did you guys think about Bobby Tarantino 2 from Logic? Mm-hmm. If you like mixtape Logic more than album Logic, let us know. Right. Prime. So, P-Rhyme... Um, don't know how you say that prime p rhyme whatever it's prime it, they, uh, they want it pronounced prime okay dj but premier they, it's the capital pr like so yeah. it looks like p rhyme dj premier and royce the vibe nine they the surprise collab from the first time around maybe it was last year uh yeah it was recent it was last year i felt like it was recent so i want to say last year tell me if we're wrong but uh they are back with prime two yeah. And more fire. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what to say. Like, 
bars upon bars upon Absolutely. bars. Um, it's, I mean, it's what I expected. Yeah, I went into it like I wasn't like, oh, let's see what Royce has got. I was like, yo, Royce is about to, especially after he went to Flex, like to promote yeah, the flex, album. Bro, that Flex like, five was eight minutes of freestyling or some shit he did, like. It was eleven. The video was eleven, was 11 minutes long, minutes. but he, you know, he took a break, and you know, so like talking, you might take out like a minute and a half. Body, so, yeah. listen, listen, Just, people. <laughs> if you don't know who Royce the Five Nine is as a rapper, just type in Royce the Five Nine, um, Funk Master Flex freestyle, and just yes. listen, bro. He absolutely murdered that shit, like crazy. He right like, he, for me, it's like basically right on par with Black Dots freestyle. Like that shit was crazy. Yeah, he had so many it's bars. Right there, man. it's right there. And he got so the charisma, and he got the personality with it, and like body, mm-hmm. bro. So yeah, I mean, I wasn't surprised what I heard on Prime Two. It's pretty much kind of what I expected. That just real hip hop shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, Prime it's, came out in 2014. Okay, so Prime we were way came off. out four years ago. So we were way off. Yeah. <laughs> it, it literally felt like it just came out, bro. <laughs> For real. But I knew it was slept on, though. That's probably because I just picked it up before this came out. I probably like just revisited it last year or something. Huh, but, 14, I know you sound right. But uh, yeah. It doesn't. But that yeah, that's what it says. <laughs> 2014. Crazy. I mean, it was exactly what I expected. Just some real hip hop shit. We got DJ Premier, Royce the Five Nine, like true rap fans, like rap, mm-hmm. you know, icons. And so at this point, like, that's what I get. I fucking love DJ Premier, and it gives you that real hip hop cr- classic shit, like with scratching and sampling and shit. So, yeah, I mean, it was lit. Like the tracks, it was weird because honestly, I kind of had a good time just. There was like a, I don't know, it, with this project, with the features that were on there, I kind of felt like, ooh, what are they going to do on this, you know? Like, with each with each time that there was a feature, I was kind of excited to hear how the artist would, like, rock with Royce on Creating Yellow Wolf a, a premiere beat. It. So, like, Rhapsody, oh man, she killed that shit. Um, Crit. Bye. Crit. Those Yellow two wolf. are like my favorite verses on the whole shit too, probably. Well, <laughs> feature verses, and uh, yeah, nah. I mean, Yellow Wolf had his little thing, he did his thing. Dave East, I don't know if I was feeling it though, honestly. If I'm gonna mm-hmm. be a hundred percent honest, I wasn't a hundred percent feeling it either. Like it was just a serviceable. Yeah, it just seemed verse. like he kind of needed to be there. It was like Royce was giving him a nod. Like yo, young nigga, give me. A like it wasn't anything crazy. Like, but Dave East doesn't really have. He's a great. I mean, he's a very good rapper, but in terms mm-hmm. of like memorable shit, like it's not that much, honestly. Right. So I wasn't like surprised by that. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't anything worth like really just going over and over again. Yeah, I mean, I kind of felt that way about Two Chains verse too. Yeah, Two okay. Chains disappointed a little bit. He be doing that though. Two Chains be low key lazy as fuck on verses. And then sometimes it'll be low key body and shit. Sometimes so. he'll savage over some shit, and you'll be like, I didn't even know Chains could like get down like that. Joe Chains can get down. I know he can, but he be he just be throwing out the laziest like yeah I'll just get on the mic real quick sometimes like, like nigga did you even think about what you wanted to say for this or did you just be like all right we going with that kind of vibe give me the headphones you know and yeah. then <laughs> sometimes yeah sometimes no but he be he still can body some shit but he ain't, ain't I agree he ain't body this one yeah nah. I mean, no offense to Chase. I love you, dude. Like, your shit is fire. Like, Pretty Girls Love Trap Music was flames. I can't flames. wait. Two Chains is probably going to drop this year. He should. So, if he comes out this year, that would be I mean, great. he said he's working. He said him and Wayne got, like, Collar Grove 2 or some shit. Yeah. 
Well, when he dropped Pretty Girls Like Trap Music, he said he was working on the next album already. So, I mean, he's probably Why not, bro. got that in the tuck in working on this other project you mentioned. So, we'll see. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, Prime. Royce the 5'9". Um, it's cool to see Royce getting his, like credit now like but is he really because i feel like this album can get slept on too i mean it is but part of it is because i don't know there's an awkwardness like i feel like it's a little bit like part of joe budden and media and royce in a weird way and eminem because of royce's relationship with eminem and how eminem's music just fucking tanked and then like I don't know. Royce was in an interview talking about Joe Budden's comments about Eminem recently. So there's like weird press about that whole camp and stuff. So I I don't know. Him and M is the same thing with like a lot of rappers who are closely associated with like mega star artists is that no matter how great your shit is, it's always being compared to your man's and then like yeah. and then like yeah it's great for you and your career because it does help you but then at the same time you hard for you to separate from mm-hmm. being associated with him so your shit can like stand on its own and i think that's like kind of always been hanging over his head in his music it's always been the yeah, yeah but him um even when he was even when him and him were like beefing and shit like when he was dropping his right. reviews and stuff the news was still all about oh yeah M's rival and shit like this M and M M and M it was like oh Royce's flames versus and shit you know so yeah so I mean I think he's just always gonna get stuck in that that place cause it's just I and mean, M's like such a fucking mega star that it's you're always gonna be stuck associated around him and then he's never gonna be like a single artist where he's got like mega singles well that's the stuff, whole so. thing that's my only criticism about the, the album is there's not one single like song like it's there it's all rap but there's like not a song like Rhapsody and Big Crit add an element that makes it sound like a song but it's there's no like real yeah hook, it's more just like, the beat and then you'll and go some crazy shit yeah yeah just a lyrical exercise and yeah. sometimes there's a story like I like that Rhapsody her verse was a story. Like, it was, like, flow. You know, like, but... But he's never know. been great at that. So that's why he's never... That's why it's annoying. too much farther outside of the core rap fans, you know? Yeah, because part of it is, like, the boom bap bar heavy flow style is, like, it's only good if it, there's, like, a good story. Like, it's, it can't be great if there's not a good story in it. Sky Otherwise... Zoo. Sky Zoo. Yeah, I, yeah. story. Story. Yeah, that's right. You story. got the full concept, bro. That's what fire. it was. Yeah, no, that shit is fire. That's better. Honestly, in terms of, like, content, it's a much better album. But in terms of, like, bars, Royce obviously outbarred everybody. Right? <laughs> Just bars. So many bars. It's really heavy to digest, too, because, like, it's hard to get... The way he raps, he doesn't... And that's another thing, is, like, there's not emphasis... There's not emphasis on things like the way, like, he might say 10 amazing punchlines in, like, 30 seconds, you know? And, and then you're just like, oh, shit, a mumble rapper will make each of those 10 punchlines one song. Like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, he's a unique rapper the way he delivers his lyrics, lyrics and stuff. Like, So, I mean, it's still going to get slapped on, bro. Let's just be honest. But it's still dope and it should be checked out. So if you are listening to this and you're into like some real rap shit, Royce the Five Nine, DJ Premier, Prime Two, definitely give that a listen. Definitely. Um, anything else you've been listening to? Um, let's see. I I did give Wale a listen. I have not um, gotten there yet. What'd you think? Eh. <laughs> I don't. Well, okay. Let me preface by saying. I've never checked for Wale. He's never, like, he's made maybe two songs that I really like that I think are classic songs, but, like, I've never cared two? about. Yeah. yeah. Well, you think that's too high? <laughs> I mean, it might be a little too low, bro. 
They gonna love me for my ambition. Might be a little too low. Nah, that's it. Just maybe two. That's one of them, and the other one I can't even remember right now. Um, his music is good. This EP is good. It's just not for me. <laughs> I just I don't know what it is about Wale, but. I mean, that's how it is with him, though. He, people either love him, like, or people, like, just think he's born. I just fuck. don't care. When he raps, I don't care. Like, it just, it, it just sounds like, like, the, his, his bravado, like, his, his swag, the way he swagadocious is confusing, basically. It's like, it's not a, it's not a type of swag I would want to emulate or, or big up. That's because it's not like effortless. Yeah, exactly. That's I'm like I don't like a nigga that works so hard for clout. Like he does. He does. He he's really he, he really he gets wants emotional it, about though. it when he doesn't like get he the needs it. He does it. He and he like he, he addresses it kind of in the music, which is kind of cool. But like, ugh, I don't know. He's like exhausting. It just feels like. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it's not like I don't know it's like nice you hear it and you're like oh this is kind of cool but like I just don't I just didn't like it I would rather even if it was the same bars J. Cole would sound better like you know yeah, I like, mean it's just not as effortless like I said and honestly out of the whole camp honestly like I was holding I wanted Wale to come in and take that like fifth or sixth spot or whatever like it is so it's like let's see Drake Big or no, it's gonna be Drake, J. Cole, Kendrick. So those are the top three. Those are the big three. And then Big Sean was kind of there. But then I was like, I don't know if he's still there or not. He's like still kinda of there. Big crit. But I always thought Wale would have had this like area. You know? I thought Wale would have moved up by now. Like in I mean he has though. He's been video game soundtrack, all this shit. But like I just don't care about his music. Like he just his his Sound doesn't hit me. I don't know. I don't know, man. But, yeah, I haven't even checked it out, so I have no opinion. But um, what do you think about it, Tory? Oh, Tory Lanes. Tory Lanes. Yo, that's so weird too. So, Tory Lanes project to me is off the first listen. There's some moments where I'm like, oh, I can, I'm, I'm like getting into it, and I'm like, yeah, Tory Lanez is lit. He's getting it. He's killing it. And it's like, I don't know if I'm a fan of Tory Lanez or like the vibe that he's emulating that doesn't necessarily feel like unique. Like it feels like a Drake slash Young Money tape, like inspired by Young Money and Drake tape. And now, like, if you heard you saying this, he'd be pissed because he doesn't think he's inspired by anybody. He thinks he inspires a lot of people. <laughs> to to fucking copy the sound that's like okay. So I guess the the closest thing I could say, like in terms of example, to give him credit for it sounding really good but not sounding unique, is like. He's he's kind of Bruno Marsing the current sound instead of the '90s sound, if that makes sense. He feels like the Bruno Mars of <laughs> the sound that's out right now already. Like, so it's lit, and everyone loves it. But it is not like I don't know him really. I still don't know you. Like, you just talk about cars still. Like, even when you, even when you're talking about drama, it, it's always. A half million dollar vehicle in every song, and <laughs> how many times I gotta hear you say Rafe, bruh? Like <laughs> in the Rafe, <laughs> like you've been saying in the Rafe for fucking since you came out, man. Is that car still that litty? Like, <laughs> I mean, for him, obviously. <laughs> I mean, shit. And then just like the way he's like, literally, it sounds kind of like uh, more life. Um. Yeah. So my thing with him is that he has always, um, more or less been like Drake light for me. Uh, <laughs> and this album, in general, even more so than his first album, felt like 
like a Drake older Drake project and like even had mm-hmm. like the 6 a.m. type of song on there with uh hate to say and then he's got like the iron shit and then like oh it just feels yeah. like too much like I mean I know he hates this fucking comparison but it's the truth and it just feels like <laughs> it's too much copying of like Drake and like other people's shit and especially particularly Drake and it's no, specifically Drake. Yeah, oh, like, and at least with the first album, I feel like he had more shit to say that was of mm-hmm. weight, you know, and like real concern to like his individuality and who he is. But like this shit was yeah. more like mm, wasn't feeling that much, honestly. So it was just like, yeah. And what's weird is after I listened to it, I kind of thought I was like, see, if Tory could have got Drake on one song. I probably would have thought about the whole album differently because it would have been a cosign. Well, apparently they're cool now, so you probably won't yeah, wait but too long. A picture cosign is not the same as a, as a music cosign. If they get on some music, then Tori could actually go to the next level because uh, everybody would say, okay, Drake cosigns him sounding like him. I mean, you know Drake is definitely going to be a fucking music cosign sooner than later. Yeah, it'd be a good look. They'd make a lot of money in Toronto, especially. I mean, that's what he said. He said, we just been fucking with the money. and So, I mean, it was just, yeah, it was definitely a step back from his first album, which wasn't, like, crazy, but it was enough to, like, be like, okay, maybe he's got some interesting shit to say. Yeah. Um, I will say, though. He is I, a better singer uh, than Drake, though. Yeah, but... He doesn't have a pocket. Like he doesn't. He doesn't pick the pocket that's good. Sometimes he goes somewhere like that I don't like. I feel like he's just showing off all of like, his skills, Morses. Like just putting it out. Yeah, the but there were I moments needed. with the auto tune that sounded like when Logic was just doing it to prove that he could do it. Like Tori sounded like that on some of it, and I didn't mm, like that. Tori's much better than Logic, bro. No, but I'm sounding like, you know the sound where it sounds like you're just doing it on the auto-tune with that pitch because you can, but it's not really, like, perfect? Like, there were moments where I was just like, nah, nah. But it was just, like, on certain songs. Otherwise, Tori's fucking killing that shit. Because when he comes in singing, honestly, it's lit. Like, it's sick. Like, I think Chris Brown could probably even learn a little bit about the rap to singing switch up like the way Tori does it I think is better than the way Chris Brown has been trying to do it but. it was a bit R&B sing heavy for me though yeah I, I'll be honest I skipped the dance hall vibes or the, the whatevers they're just, right. as soon as I they're, heard it I skipped right. it they just at this point it's just like oversaturation now yeah so it's not like oh you had so many people have been beat have beaten them to it that it would have been like for me personally I'd have been like nah we're not going that route right but you know whatever um so it was just alright yeah I uh I mean I have my reaction for that on the side also have a reaction to Moby Moby. everything was beautiful and nothing hurt for those all know Moby you for sure heard him Uh, born identity theme at the end of the movie. So, Extreme mm-hmm. Ways is the name of that song. Some, like, interesting, more chill shit. Uh, mm-hmm. Very, like, melancholic and... I don't know, it was just, like, beautiful fucking music. Like, with the synths and, like, the crazy, like... I don't know, just some, like, crazy sounds and, like, crazy spacey synths on there. And, like, mm-hmm. it was just some dope, like, I like electronic pop type music but more chill than like uh what's the word chill than like a melancholic if i'll say it again but there's i just can't think of a better word for it right now but mm-hmm. definitely more on the chill front than like other shit i've been listening to so that was a good switch up for me um yeah. my reaction is on the site for that and also had another reaction for mgmt a little dark h which is again like some like Electro pop shit. Um, mm. It was a dope album. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, uh, the last few stuff I wasn't feeling since like they first came onto the scene. Like they always been like kind of a hipster type of act for me. Like yeah, where they do when they first came on, it was just so different than what everybody else was doing. And like that's kind of right. the sound of like alternative electronic like pop is now. Like mm-hmm. so like it, their stuff just felt like kind of got passed by. But this shit's dope, man. Like it's got some good vibes on this one for sure. Yeah. And, like, the content and, like, the lyrical stuff is actually, it's, like, a mix of, like, poppy, kind of upbeat shit and then, like, darker lyrics and shit like that and, like, topics that they're talking about. Yeah. But, uh, if I would say that, that, I would say definitely check out MGMT Little Dark Age. They got some interesting shit on there that uh, stands out from what a lot of stuff is that you'll be hearing and what I've been listening to. So, that go to mm-hmm. that for a switch up. Um. Other than that, man, I just got I got some I got some albums on my list that I need to yeah, check out and to give some reactions out. to. Um, David Byrne is probably like right there at the top of my list. He's dropped in one American Utopia, and he always does some like some out there shit. So definitely excited to hear that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Decemberist, I'll be your girl. Sango and Comfort of like an electronic shit. So like definitely some switch up for some rap for me. Three days grace outside or something like that. And uh And I got this rich homie Quan I wanna hear, man. <laughs> he just dropped his debut album it's and funny. like it's been so long uh, since he first burst onto the scene and then uh, I never even checked for that. Yeah, it just came out and uh And at first, I was for sure not going to listen to it, but then he's like, <laughs> the way he was promoting it was like, this is some real music, like, not like just some straight trap stuff. Like, this is some, yeah. like, with some real content. That's what right. he's saying. And, like, the name of the album is Rich as in Spirit, which means, like, he's not just on that money and hoes sh- mm. shit. So, I, I like that title. So, I'm like, I'm okay. interested. I don't know. How okay. he sounds doing stuff like this, like I don't think it's gonna be right. like no super conscious shit, like Kendrick or other people like Thor J Cole. But I think it'll be like it won't be as like trap and just like ignorant as some of his earlier stuff I heard. Yeah. So um, I just want to check it out just to see like if it actually is that or you know what that would right. sound like. So yeah. Yeah, I think oh, I forgot. You plan on listening to on your list? Um, yeah, I mean, I know. So, XXX Tentacion has an album dropping tomorrow. Um, and basically, I'm interested to hear this album cause just because there's so much hype around this kid. And his last project was interesting because every song was like two minutes. So, I'm like, I'm really interested to see this. He dropped a single recently called Sad. It was like, I could feel the vibe, and I kind of liked it. It wasn't enough for me to, like, download it or buy it or anything like that. But I'm interested to hear that tomorrow. Um, something I forgot that I listened to, because it was, like, really fucking annoying and trash. Uh, Little Boat 2. Lil Yachty. Jesus. I, Still I, will not get a, a spin from me. I wanted to see if there would be anything at all. I'm like, can he make a song that's good? Bro, his flow is so trash. It's, it's, it's I can't, like, how, how are you a millionaire? Like, oh. Uh, because it's easier than ever nowadays. But, uh, I mean, uh, let me know. Check that out and let me know. Let me know what you think, bro. <laughs> Little boat. You can do that with both of us. So let me know. That's some trash. Apparently, currency is gonna come out with some shit. <sighs> when Again. doesn't he come out with some shit, bro? Yeah, it's, it's too crazy. much at this point. I don't even try to keep up. Um, but yeah, I mean that's really all I got. Yeah, and so there's I'm, a few singles like oh Ray Schremer, they're gonna drop soon. Yeah, Shrimp Line Three is coming out at some point soon. Sway Lee, Slim Jimmy had a, a single Brinks truck. Sway Lee had his too. Like they had not. Oh, yeah. Full on solo, but they have like their own individual songs on the album. Right. Testing the waters out. Kind of um, like uh, Love Below and Speaker Box, but not. Exactly. Not as separate, though. They're still going to have their joint stuff. 
Yeah. So, I mean, if there's any albums you guys uh, have on your list to listen to or have queued up to listen to or currently listening to, let us know what it is. We're always interested to see what other people, you know, think is dope and what they're checking for. So, let us know what you listen to. Let us know if if there's anything that we should be on the lookout for. But uh, to end this, we're going to tell you new music that you should be looking for specifically dropping today and next week yeah. or not today but tomorrow March 16th and then next week so let's just go through some of these that just popped out at me um, Bishop Nehru for those of you who know super underground rapper um, mm-hmm. dropping album called Elevators Act 1 and 2 Prime is coming out tomorrow. Prime or Prime Two is coming out tomorrow officially, so check that out. Mm-hmm. Snoop Dogg, <laughs> Snoop Dogg what? Bible of Love is coming out. Uh, it's Are like his serious? gospel album, yeah. Oh snap! Yeah, if you haven't known about that, he's he went from reggae <laughs> to uh, what was his last one? Some other shit too. Oh, I don't remember. It was, it was some other line, like just non rap shit, and then bro. He did something for a second. I don't know. He's like He's all know. over the fucking place. He's just like the definition of a guy who's just done so <laughs> like pretty much everything. So like now yeah. he's just trying shit out just to try it. Uh, right. <laughs> so if you want to hear a Snoop Dogg gospel album, dropping tomorrow. Bible of Love by Snoop Dogg. Uh Okay. Stone Temple Pilots, a self-titled album coming out tomorrow as well. The Decemberist, mm-hmm. I Will Be Your Girl or I'll Be Your Girl coming out. Um, so check for that. Uh, I see a listing for Thundercat called Drank, but I don't No, That's the first I've heard of that. So maybe hmm. that'd be dope. Be unexpected. That'd be dope. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Thundercat. Let's see. Okay. Um, That's crazy. Let me see if there's anything else here for March 16th. That's of note. At least that jumped out at me. Nope. Bun B? So Does it say Bun B? Yeah. I did not see anything from Bun B dropping them off. Hmm. The list I got says Return of the Trail is supposed to come out tomorrow. Dropping next week, March 23rd. That would be lit. Bun B is supposed to drop? Ooh. I mean, I'm not seeing anything on here, but if you see something. I know he drops some singles, but I don't know about the album. But uh, March 23rd, mm-hmm. we are getting some more stuff. Jack White, his album's finally coming out. Uh, Boarding House Reach is the name of that. So that's one for sure I'm checking out. Uh, that's a must. Um... There's a list on for Tory Lanez, but Tory Lanez already came out. Uh... Yeah, I mean, that's what that's what we got coming out this week and then what's coming out next week. Really of note, next week is um, Jack White. For me, that's the only one I really, really is a must for you guys to check out. But that's it. If there's anything else coming out this week or next week that we have not talked here, let us know. And uh, yeah, we'll put it on. Learn all I got. Hello. So yeah, so that's it for uh, this week's. Music Files, today's day, March 15, 2018. It's been real with me, your host, Dario Hunt, Darius Walker. You can reach me at IMD Hunt. You can reach him at Artist D Walker. You yep. can follow us, our official page, 
on everything Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, mm-hmm. uh, Facebook, either at Living Life Fearless or LLF Official. I think YouTube is the LLF Official because I couldn't get it for some reason. But yeah, follow us, um, comment. We get back to you guys. We love interacting with you guys. Uh, if you want to get any of these gear, any of these shirts we're wearing right now, we have a few left still on the side. Yeah. These are our official team tees that we give out to the team. Team. You'll see the truth. The swag. Yeah. 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 For those listening, the Reese's turned around to show off his face grill. <laughs> I don't know. That looked crazy. I was like, I don't know if I can even turn around. What does that even look like? Can you even see the logo, y'all? You can see like, it a little bit. I'm like, you can see a little bit. But you can definitely go see it over at HTTPS <laughs> or www.livinglifefearless.co or .com, wherever you want to go. So, um, yeah. Go check it out. Grab some gear. We got some new shit coming real, real soon. We'll be announcing that real soon. Um, new swag. New collabs. As always, if you have any questions, comments, topic suggestions about this week, past weeks, or upcoming shows, you can comment below on the video or the audio file or wherever this goes up. Um, we will try to get back to you. Or you can email us directly at podcast at livinglifefearless.co. Or you can go to livinglifefearless.co slash podcast and fill out the form. Either way, there's a million ways to reach us. We will get back to you when we can. And if you enjoyed this podcast and you are on YouTube or SoundCloud or wherever, please like this and share it and subscribe if you're not already. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll keep these coming. That's it. That's it for this week. We'll be back shortly. Thanks for listening. Peace. Peace, y'all. Keep living life fearless. We'll be back soon.